Best of r slash tales from retail episode 63. Subscribe for Reddit videos daily. Guy comes in with his wife. She's picking out what she wants to buy and all is chill. Guy suddenly spots a sign I meant to take down yesterday. We were doing an offer for the January sales. Missed all but one. Damn. It was a 2-4 deal. I explained to the guy that it was my mistake and I proceed to take the sign down and apologize for the misunderstanding. The guy physically puts his hand on the sign to block me. I take it off anyway. Wife picks out what she wants and proceeds to pay. The guy begins mumbling under his breath complaining that they didn't get the deal. She gives him a sharp elbow and the ribs to shut up. They would have saved about one pound. 40 on a 11 pound purchase. The wife seemed perfectly content to pay the normal price. Apparently at this point I should have given her the offer for goodwill, which I agree, but this guy was being weird about it so I just tried to get the transaction done with. They pay and leave, I don't think much of it and continue my day serving lots of customers. The guy then come back half an hour later alone, asking if I'm the owner, making the accusation that I need more customer service training, threatening to leave me a bad review on Facebook. I tell him he's more than welcome to leave a review. He's not impressed at all by this. Guy is acting extremely condescending so I tell him again, he's free to leave a bad review. I have no intention in doing anything for him as he wasn't even the one purchasing. He assures me he will make the review. I tell him that's cool. It's my first complaint. Says I'll get more complaints speaking to customers like that. Right single quotation mark. And that's it. I got my first bad review today. Could have gone better. Could have been worse I guess. Thank you. Next. English not my first language. Long time Luca. Translated from Dutch to English. Yada yada. Now let's out of the way, let's set the scene. This is an small story from back when I worked at a chocolate shop. Back when I just started stewing I worked part time at a chocolate shop in the oldest part of town. Now the location of the chocolate shop was rather special. The building was over 200 years old. Before the current owner bought it and refurbished it into a chocolate shop some of the older customers told me that for almost 100 year the shop housed in Fisher's family and fish cellar. This was until the 1960s. The mother that took over the business after her husband died, and that the children did not want to get into the fishy business. They and decided to sell the shop. In the first months I started working there some strange things happened. They were always tiny things like chocolate boxes I swear were there a minute ago would moved. But one of the most nauticable things was that it seemed like there was someone in the store while I was all alone. What would happen is that I would be working in the storage room, or with my back turned to the counter. From the corner of my eye I would notice a woman in a blue dress standing in front of the cash register. As always I would turn around to greet them with a hearty how can I help you. But as soon as I turned around the store was completely empty, no one was there besides me. After a while I just blamed it on the lightning and the feeling of the store. A couple months later I was having a drink with some female colleges after the store closed. We were talking about strangest things that happened during. Colleague, I swear I have a mouse infestation at home, either that or my house is haunted. Me, talking about haunted, I might be getting crazy. But every freaking time I work at this place I swear to god I see a customer out of the corner of my eye. But when I turn around there is no one there they both start laughing. When I look at them questioningly she answers. College, seems you have met one of the residents. At this point I'll look at her confused me. What are you talking about? I tough this building was owned by boss lady. Care to explain colleague? Well yes it is. You know how this used to be a fishing store right? I nod colleague. You're not the only one that has that problem. We toughed we were crazy. But a year ago I had a rather interesting experience with an customer colleague. She came into the store looking rather distressed. When I asked her if I could help her she said. Customer, I don't really know how to tell you this. But the ghost of the old owner is in this shop. I have to tell you she is really happy it got turned into a chocolate shop. She loves it how exiting people get about the chocolate in her old store colleague. I am sorry. What are you talking about? Customer, you know, the woman in with the blue dress, the fish's wife, colleague. After that the woman hurried out of the store, and I never saw her again. I don't know if she spoke the truth, but that blue shimmer you sometimes see out of your eye. I like to believe that's the old owner who still watches over the store. 
I don't know if that customer was just pulling her leg, but I do tough it was a rather cute story. Every new employee I trained after that I told that story. Thank you. Next. Just to start out, I know what I did was not smart, but I was livid there is an older man. He will be MH. He's known in my area for being an infamous thief, including from my store, which is why he's on no trespass. I saw MH outside at the gas pumps, waiting for his friend to be done in the store. I gave MH a pass because he was just waiting, until I look again and he isn't there. I have a screen where I can see what's going on at the diesel pumps around back, and I see him on the back patio. I give him a minute, and that's when I see him carting away the Red Bull cooler that was outside for reclamation. I ran outside and got in his face and told him to let it go, that it isn't his. He claimed that my co-worker told him he could have it. I informed him that it isn't hers to give away. I took it from him, and brought it inside. I was so angry because I was giving him a teensy chance and he couldn't help himself. He just had to take something. He's cursed me out before when I told him to leave, and put his hand on the large knife that he keeps on his belt. Just, what a night. Thank you. Next. Worked retail for video games in a toy shop over the Christmas holidays. There were Karens here and there but overall I had a fantastic time there and would probably do it again. But I'll never forget this one time like two days before Christmas. The hottest item in the shop is the Nintendo Switch. We had so many in the back that I just assumed we'd never run out. Until we did. Or at least there was one left. The X to get one were very long. And although it wasn't explicit that everyone in said wanted a Switch. It was all anyone asked for for the last week, so it was heavily assumed. The woman, mid-forties, let's call her Carol, comes to the desk and days to me do you have any Nintendo Switches in stock? I say yes. We have one left. Carol asks prices, and I tell her it's 330 euros on its own, or 375 for it and a Mario game. She freaks at the price, asking if there's any way I can chop money off it, I say no. Another employee looks at me as in to say are you selling that last one? This guy just asked for it too so we give her priority on it since she was there first. She says um, I am going to have to walk and think about it. I warn her um it's the last one we'll have before Christmas but she sort says it's fine while looking around the shop. Cool. So the switch is sold in like 10 seconds after she leaves the line. And sure enough an hour later she comes back saying okay, she'll take it. Me. I'm sorry miss but the console has been sold. Carol. Well be a good girl and get one from the back. Me. No. They're all gone now. That was the last one. I told you sir. She gets visually angry and raises her voice. Carol. Stop lying to Emmy. If you won't get IT for Emmy I demand to see your manager. I call my manager over. Who tells her that that was the last one and there is nothing we can do. We're sorry. Carol tells me that she refuses to move until she walks out of our store with a switch now. For at least 40 minutes she's standing at my till blocking the line so that she can have all of our attention. No one could move her. Eventually we had to open other tills around Carol to keep lines moving. Eventually I went for lunch and after an hour when I went back to work she was gone. In her time waiting for the magical switch to appear she said she was going to call the consumer information helpline on us. Threatened us with bringing specific members of staff onto radio shows where she would expose us act At the end of the day she could have bought it, but Carol decided to come in last minute before 100% committing to buy it. We had the console for weeks prior to Christmas but she chose to leave it so late. Not my fault. Thank you. Next. So, this was probably the weirdest thing to ever happen to me while working at my job. I work in grocery and this happened a couple days ago on Tuesday, which I feel is relevant because Tuesdays are always essentially dead. Me and my co-worker were facing up our department. If you don't know what that is, it's essentially making the store all neat and tidy for the next day. It's a pain in the ass, but that's besides the point. At about 7.30, my co-worker was doing some of his duties elsewhere, when he noticed a guy pocket something. This isn't my actual story. But I feel it's good to have some context. He follows him and informs the front desk about him, and we can't really do anything about it because we didn't actually see him take anything, but they review the security footage anyway. So here's my experience. At around 8 10 8 15, my co-worker goes on his break. I continue to face as normal and wait for him to come back. 
Not even 30 seconds later, a guy comes up to me, and this is how the conversation went. Hi, I'm sorry to bother you, but I need to show you something disgusting. Um, okay, we start to walk. So, when I started walking over to this section, I saw a guy drinking shampoo, threw up and was trying to steal something. Huh, okay, well did he steal anything? No, when he saw me standing here, he booked it out of the store. So, there I was standing there, with brown vomit covering half the aisle in front of the Tylenol pills. I thank the customer and go inform the worker in charge, Wick, in front end of it and if he could review the tapes. The first thing he asks me is, was he wearing a grey shirt? Because our shoplifter from earlier was wearing a grey shirt, and I told him I didn't know. Afterwards, I just mop it up, and if you're thinking shampoo vomit might actually smell better, I can tell you with absolute certainty, it does not. My co-worker comes back from break, and tell him about it, and we have a bit of a laugh about it. He's curious and goes to talk to the front desk about it, and they tell him that he may have been wearing a beekeeping hat. We later found out that it was our plain clothes that told them this, so it actually seems legit. Me and my co-worker had a laugh about it for the rest of the night, and this will turn into a new legend in our store. Moral of the story, don't fucking drink shampoo. And to the beekeeper, if you're reading this, could you come back to the store and answer one question for me? What the hell was going through your head? Thank you. Next. Not sure if this'll go here or somewhere else but here goes. P.S. This is a completely true story. Just clarifying I work graveyard at a gas station so I have a few stories that could go on here but this just happened today and I needed to get it out before I get in trouble for it. A couple teens come into my store, wood is up and blowing into their hands. The wind is pretty rough and it's cold out so it makes sense. I take care of a few customers and forget about them. Then one bolts out the door with two 18 packs of cores. I tell me co-worker to follow him as his friend trails behind with a 24 pack of PBR. I grab the door handles and hold the door shut. Me, you need to pay for that. Him, trying to push past me, prying my fingers off the handle. Me, you're not going anywhere. I grip the handle tighter and swing an arm around him. Him, not going anywhere am I? The door falls open and I scream for my assistant manager as I fall on this kid. The box of beer break open and the kid bolts crying. I'll be honest, I did threaten to beat his ass if he or his friends came back, but gathered the crushed box and rolling beer cans and went back inside. AM, what the hell happened? Coworker, brand new, first day on graveyard, she just gave me a reason not to piss her off. Thank you, next. Okay, so the disclaimers, on mobile and not good at formatting, etc. I work at a small locally owned hardware store. We have several people in our fairly small community that we see enter the store and are immediately on alert about. One of them is an 80 plus year old small Asian Mormon lady. She stalks my young guys, the ones in my 20s, around the store every time she comes in, trying to get them more pamphlets and get them to go to her service etc. She has been politely told no by both of them, and she doesn't try it on the older people or any of the cashiers, like me, F23, but it's often enough that they both make themselves totally scarce when she comes in. So, on this day, me is me, Ab is my absolutely awesome boss, TC is tired cashier, and B is the poor hair raced guy she's following. Oh right, and I'll, our Asian lady, she comes in to buy a few things, and I point her in the right direction. The first thing she does is ask about my guy co-workers, is the other one there? Is B here? And knowing why she asks, I was super vague back there somewhere I think. When she returns with her items, I start ringing her out, not being super chatty because uh, I don't want a pamphlet and B, she was looking for something in her purse. It just seems courteous not to talk to someone who is clearly doing something. I get to the point where the receipt is almost ready to print, where I'd say thanks for coming in, have a nice day. Don't get to wet out in the rain when she looks up at me and starts to scold me in her I know better tone. Apparently Al used to work in retail for 50 years she resayed this about 10 times, the same way people use um. Anytime she didn't know what to say, and I was being very unfriendly and had not said any of her 5 customer service lines. Remember, transaction not even done. 
I look up and TC is working hard helping someone get the right tool they need, holding up the other register, and the line behind her is forming, about 3 people now. She continues to tell me how it's my job to make customers want to come back and maybe she won't come back and it's extra important to be extra extra nice to foreign people, because apparently they need it. My personal policy is I'll be the same nice to everyone, unless they are a holes. Five people in line now. She's just standing there, lecturing me, about how unfriendly I am. Never seen a former retail worker so willing slash and caring of the line they're creating. Finally. Finally she leaves, then comes back in the door before I finish even one customer. I needed to talk to B and off into the store she goes. Once I clear the line, the handset next to me is paged from the back. It's Ab, telling me she was telling him of how unfriendly I was and he knows that's utter nonsense because I'm the nicest cashier they have, and asked me to kill her with kindness, since she got something else. Sure enough, here she is, and I was sugar sweet to her. So much so that she went back to Ab and told him I was so nice this time and please don't tell her I said that etc. At this point, every time she stops the boss, she talks for at least 15 minutes. So she's been in the store more than an hour with all this, and we've all heard how long she worked in retail, how old she is, and how she's Asian. Many times, we jokes about it after. Ab telling me what she was saying and how no one feels like they're allowed to end the conversation with her. 